Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, out here for another course review, and today we're talking about the Runation Vehicular Carbine Employment. One day course, kind of centered around carbines and vehicles. If you're unfamiliar with Runation, it is a training company owned, operated by Ian, and centered around basically firearms training, whether it's pistol or carbine, as well as kind of a combative side. And as I mentioned, this class is basically centered around how to employ a carbine that you're pulling out of a backpack and or a vehicle. So with that, we kind of jump straight into it. It being a one day class, starting off with safety brief and a med brief. After that, got straight into a cold start. Ian is definitely big on cold starts and I think there's a lot of value there. Basically seeing where you at before you knock the rust off. Like, where you're at cold because the chances are if something happens out in the real world you don't get a dry fire you don't get a warm up any of that stuff like straight to it so started this cold start ian ended up initially demoing and unlike some cold starts that he does which are basically paper cold starts with hard times and pass fail this one was different in that it was basically broken down into brackets as far as more or less like expert, intermediate, beginner, depending on where you fell kind of within this like time brackets. And it was ultimately pass fail in that at the very end of it, there is pistol shot to the head. And if that goes outside of the scored box, then automatic failure. But after he ended up demonstrating it, everyone had a chance to go ahead and run through the cold start. After that, we moved into a little block on offset. Offset gets really important, especially depending on what kind of mount you're running and especially shooting around vehicles because you will end up shooting vehicles if you don't take that into consideration. And both with the offset also kind of went into a short discussion on the difference between cover as well as concealment and essentially how to effectively use those vehicles. So we were fortunate in that we had two different vehicles oriented different ways, one nose in, one kind of parallel to downrange. And with that, started working through just positional shooting around those different vehicles at different targets and kind of got to work around Robin. So there wasn't a bunch of dead time, basically one vehicle going, then the next vehicle going, and after you get some reps, move over to the other vehicle, vice versa get in just cycle through the two different vehicles. Right side shoulder. Shot on the blue. 
inside shoulder. Head to the blue. Back in the group. Kind of sticking with crawl, walk, run after having shot static from those different positions before we actually got into deploying the gun from bags. Little block of instruction on basically bag selection, bag setup, equipment layout, weapon selection. How to basically make all those things work synergistically before we got into it. Then building on what we had been learning, started to incorporate that. So getting out of the vehicle, going to the back, grabbing our bag, whether it was in the back seat, trunk, wherever it may be, pulling it out, retrieving that carbine, and going to work. Left side. Center. And because of kind of a known issue coming into it with some ammo I had, which I'll go into more in my loadout video, but ended up having my gun go down. And I was like, well, I guess it's time to transition. Transitioned, ended up having that go down. So I ended up drawing my knife. Yeah, I wasn't gonna run up to the target and stab it, but honestly, it speaks more to mindset, which if you're out on the dry range, it's a free rep, even if it just turns into you drawing a knife out versus being like, oh, sorry coach, I'm done, I'm all out of bullets. Mindset, right? Circle, circle, circle. Far right, far right, far right. continuing to build. We then got into basically trying to solve the problem initially with our pistol. So from that driver's seat, then retrieving our bag with our carbine, and then finally making our way to a better weapon system, putting that pistol away, getting our carbine, subgun, whatever it is that people had out, and solving the problem there. Crawl, walk, run, and kind of putting it all together. Threat, threat, threat. Left target, left target, left target. Center target, center target.
side, left side. We also had a short block on malfunctions, why it wasn't by any stretch a big portion of the class. It was just like, hey, if you encounter these at any time, here's how you clear them. To the chamber at the same time. So you have one in the chamber, and you have one directly underneath. The issue left, left, left. Right, right, right. And continuing to add more layers, more complexity to it, we introduced someone who is a non-shooter in that they're basically someone you're responsible for, bigger picture, think spouse, children, friend, someone who's not an asset at the same time. They're not gonna draw a gun out and kinda help you solve the problem, so there's someone you have to take care of. And with that, basically how to safely move them so that they do not get hurt, and also just kinda some solid concepts and principles with respect to dealing with them and hopefully breeding calm because at the end of the day calm breeds calm you even if they're not going to be an asset you do not need them jumping up sprinting somewhere into danger anything like that so incorporated some non-shooters two 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 Four, four, four. All right. One, one, one. And that last and final layer, the culmination. So not only were we doing all those things we'd been working up to that point to include moving that person safely out of and around the vehicle, but now we actually had to move them a distance. And on top of that, we had no shoot targets. So basically target discrimination because not everyone needs to get shot. So is this person a threat? Threat indicators looking at hands. Do they have a weapon? Things along those lines and wrapping it all up in that final culminating exercise. Threat, threat, threat. This isn't a bad way. I need you to listen to me and we'll get out. So all right. Stay right there. All right, I'm staying right here. Okay. As soon as you hang out, be out there, ready. All right, sounds good. Come on, now. Come on right. Stay low, stay low. All right, sounds Sit good. right there. Alright? Yep. Alright. 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 Right four, right four, right four. Left one, left one, left one. 
hearing my voice. Okay, this one's gonna get through this way. Sounds good. You doing okay, Ian? I'm doing all right. <laughs> left three, left three, left three. Stay right there. Listen, see behind me? Okay. See that vehicle back there? Yep, I do. When I say, you're going to move to me, okay. and then we're going to move to it together. All right, do you understand good. what I just said? All right, I'm okay. going to move to that vehicle, I'm going to come to you. All right, go to the vehicle. All right. You want to check the front? Okay. Left two, left two, left two! Left two. Left two. Left two. Right four, right four, right four. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Right two, right two, right two. Is that okay, buddy? All right, sounds good. Left three, left three, left three. Okay, all right, all right, sounds good. Big picture, awesome course. On the one hand, it was honestly a ton of fun. Really good group out there, and Ian did a great job kind of breaking down those concepts and principles. Who do I think it would be good for? Well, someone who is or is planning on carrying a carbine in and around a vehicle, which probably a lot of people. It's one of those where it's nothing ninja, super special this and that, but there's definitely nuanced kind of concepts and principles when working with those guns around vehicles. And most people spend a lot of time around vehicles. A lot of people carry carbines and this kind of puts it all together to include whether you're carrying your carbine in a backpack even away from vehicles. There's still vehicles everywhere and basically how to properly use them as cover and work around them. Really fun. Who do I think this would be good for? Again, people that want to kind of put all that together. Is there a barrier for entry? I don't know that there is a hard, fast, hey, this is the criteria you need to have taken this, 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 but here's what it comes down to. You need a unconscious competence with respect to manipulating the gun. Does that mean you hit every single target all the time? No, it doesn't. But what it does mean is that every time you pick up to move, you always put the safety on your gun. Again, unconscious confidence. Or you're just aware of where your muzzle is. Because all this comes into play, one, so it ended up blasting vehicle in front of you accidentally and throwing frag back at you and other people, but then also working around other people. And if you can't and continuously manipulate your safety or you have to be told, hey, keep your finger off the trigger, like outside the trigger guard, index somewhere on the gun, eh, class might not be for you. But once those skills are there and that foundation's there, yeah, and it's a really fun class. If you're interested in this or any of Ian's other courses, you can find all the info down below, click the link, take you over to Room Nation, and you see all the course descriptions. This one, definitely a really fun course. Really enjoyed it and got a lot of good takeaways. If you're gonna be around vehicles, which most people are, and if you're gonna carry a carbine, I think there's definitely a lot of value there. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Hit in the mirror. Oh, yep.
bike. Threat, threat, threat. 